Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. With mercy and glory forever. Almighty God.
that he would inherit the world did not come to Abraham or to his descendants through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. If it is that adherents of the law who are to be the heirs, faith is null and the promise is void. For the law brings wrath, but where there is no law, neither is there violation. For this reason, it depends on faith. In order that the promise may rest on grace and be guaranteed to all his descendants, not only to the inheritance of the law, but also to those who share the faith of Abraham. For he is the father of all of us, as it is written. I have made you the father of many nations. In the presence of the God in him, in whom he believes, who gives life to the dead and calls into existence the things that do not exist. Hoping against hope, he believed that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. So numerous shall be your descendants be. He did not weep in faith when he considered his own body, which was already as good as dead, for he was about a hundred years old. Or when he considered the barrenness of Sarah's womb, no distrust made him waver concerning the promise of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he had gave glory to God, being full, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. Therefore his faith was reckoned to him as righteousness. Now the words that was reckoned to him were written not for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be reckoned to us who believe in him. Who raised Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was handed over to death for our trespasses, and was raised for our justification. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. to gain the whole world and forfeit their life. 
Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation of man, the Son of Man, will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the Holy Angel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, and Lord Christ. <coughs> know that 
from personal experience that childbirth is a wonderful event, but it is not suffering free. Being a parent is not suffering free. If you have any kind of a relationship, there is difficulty and adjustment that takes giving up some of who we think we are and dealing with stuff that is sometimes painful. So one is, we shouldn't be surprised because it's part of life from the get-go, from the very beginning, it's part of life. But we also don't have to suffer in silence. You know, sometimes we have a tendency to think, oh, we can't be mad at God. We can't vent. We're supposed to suffer in silence, quietly, on our own, and put on a good face. And social media is the worst about that. Because social media encourages us to post all the wonderful things that are happening in our life and none of the bad. You go on vacation and you post all the great pictures. You don't post when you get Montezuma's Revenge or COVID or there's a snafu with your airlines and you don't get your luggage until three days later. All of the kinds of things when life goes bad, you have a tendency not to put on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok. We put the good stuff on. And what that means is that people who use social media all the time think that that's the way life is supposed to be all the time. When we know that's simply not the case. But to go back to the being mad at God. So I went to a conference that's about Christian formation um, that was mostly on Zoom, but there was an opportunity to gather with groups of people um, around the country. And I went to Claggett, which if you don't know, is the Diocesan Camp and Conference Center for the Diocese of Maryland and the Diocese of Washington. It's near, it used to be in Buckystown, and then the post office changed its address. <laughs> so now it's in Adamstown, but it's right near Frederick. And it's a lovely place. Um, and when we had reflection time in the mornings, uh, we had a priest slash counselor from the Diocese of Washington give us a series of reflections. And he pointed us to the Psalms, most of which are laments. When was the last time you really thought about lamenting? There are songs for lamenting about how our life isn't going the way we thought it ought to. And they're all addressed to God. Why, God, are you doing this? Why, God, have you not come to help me? God, you promised you would be with me. Why don't I feel your presence? God, I'm putting you on notice. Everybody's watching to see how you treat me. And if you think all of that sounds blasphemous, go read the Psalms. It's there in spades. And we don't, as a church, and as a society, don't promote that way of talking to God. 
So today, I'm going to encourage you to do that. When you feel like life is really hard, it is not just appropriate, it's helpful and can bring us to a place of healing when we can admit, I mean, we started, part of the reason that I stopped the service to get that colic for purity that we say at the beginning of the service is because that prayer says, God, you know everything about my life. Everything. You know how I feel. And if God already knows how we feel, then saying to God, I'm really pissed at you, is not something that's going to come as a surprise. <laughs> Nor is it something that I think God is going to punish you for. It's about being honest about how we feel. And only when we're honest with ourselves and with God can there be true reconciliation. There are no secrets from God, but we are really good, I think, at trying to pretend there are so that we don't have to face them. If I'm not willing to say to God that I'm really angry, then I don't have to admit to myself that I'm really angry. If I don't have to say to God that I'm disappointed in God, that I don't have to admit to myself that I am. If I don't have to talk about how much I suffer and am in pain, then I can mask my pain or ignore it, but it's really hard to heal. You know, sometimes we don't like to go to the doctor because we know that we have some pain and we are afraid to find out what it's about. Jesus is upfront about his suffering. He knows it's going to happen and he tells his disciples. And he tells the public. He knows that he's headed for trouble. There's a certain amount of, how much did he know? I don't know. But he knew that he was ruffling feathers, to put it mildly. I mean, after all, pretty early on in this ministry, according to one of the Gospels, he almost got thrown off a cliff. It is on the wrong town. Not a surprise that people are out to kill him. Alexei Obama knew the same thing. He knew it didn't stop him because he had a mission. Jesus had a mission that required these And so here we are. In Lent, thinking about our relationship with God and hearing Jesus say, suffering is a part of the process. Are you willing to take a stab at being honest with God and with yourself about how much that really doesn't feel good? And you wish it were different. And maybe that you blame God. Take the risk. You might discover that it leads to different understanding of yourself, of God, a different relationship. a reconciliation and a faith and a trust that that after three days makes a difference. That in the end as Teresa 
Agatha says, all, no, Julian of Norwich, all will be well. In the end, getting there is no piece of cake. Unless you don't like cake. <laughs> and there are some people who don't like, there are people who don't like chocolate. Nevertheless, getting there usually involves some kind of suffering. And it is not just okay. I think in some instances, it's imperative that we will need to confront that. And not just on Good Friday, but in our lives when it comes up. It's, it's okay. It's good to lament, to cry out and say, this is not fair. This is not what I signed up for. I don't like this. Maybe even throw a little bit of a temper tantrum. And discover that God's right there with you. And that God is not going to reject you for that, but is ready to embrace you when you are ready to be embraced. That's the good news of Jesus saying, I'm headed for death. I'm headed for suffering. I'm here with you and will be always.
closely linked to God, and great that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as He loves us. We give thanks especially for those celebrating birthdays and for those celebrating anniversaries, especially Kenny and Monica Christopher and Pete and Barbara Donalds. We pray for this Reverend Stephanie Klingel and Lynn Wilgen as they respond to their calls of holy orders. We pray in thanksgiving for the work of the members of the House of Bishops that they gathered this week. Glory in your mercy. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy in your salvation. We pray for those who are sick, especially those who are in prayer and all those whom, you have, whom, whom we have in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that you may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, that those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we